In this video, we'll be going over cards which grant effects when they're used as materials for something, whether it be for XE, synchros, fusions, ritual summons, or whatever. And at number 10, we have Math Mech Die Meter. This is a level 4 tuner monster where, if it's used as a material for a Math Mech Synchro or Xyz monster, that monster will gain the effect where, once per turn during the turn the card is summoned, you gain one free Omni Negate basically. The card also has the effect that when it's normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 Cybers monster from your graveyard, which allows you to set up using this card as a material, especially since it itself is a tuner monster. Now, the effects it grants only works during the turn the card is brought out, but it's a really good granted effect, and this card would probably be higher on this list if it could keep that effect for longer than just the turn it's brought out. Having an Omni Negate is much better if you're able to use it during your opponent's turn, but it's still good if you have one during your turn as well. Although probably not as good as some of the higher spots in this list that are part of slightly better archetypes or just a little bit more useful on their own. And at number 9, we have Beginning Night. Now, technically, we can also have the Evening Twilight Night of the spot as well, since it kind of does the same thing. And what Beginning Night does is if this card is used as material for a Black Luster Soldier Ritual Monster, that monster gains two additional effects. One of them is the ability to once per turn banish one of your opponent's monsters. The other is if that monster destroys a monster by battle, you can make a second attack in a row. So this card will basically give a Black Luster Ritual Monster both of the effects of Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning, a card that was a staple for a really long time and was banned on the ban list longer than it was off of it. This card goes on to have the effect that if it's banished from the graveyard, you get to add a Ritual Spell card from your deck to your hand, which combos very well with some of the Twilight aspects of Black Luster Soldier cards, where they like to banish light and dark monsters from the graveyards to summon some of their other monsters from the archetype. Now, Evening Twilight Night works basically the same way. It will grant a Black Luster Soldier Ritual Monster two effects when it's used as material for a Ritual Summon, and if it's banished from the graveyard, you get to add a Ritual Monster from your deck to your hand. Except the effects Evening Twilight grant are the ability to also once per turn banish one of your opponent's monsters, and once per turn you can banish one random card from your opponent's hand face down until your opponent's next end phase. Now, here's what's great about Evening and Beginning Night. Their effects do stack with each other if you use both of them for a Black Luster Soldier Ritual Monster, which means you gain the effects to once per turn banish one of your opponent's monsters two times, while also being able to banish one card from your opponent's hand and attack twice. So a fully buffed up Black Luster Soldier Super Soldier can potentially win you the game in one turn, which you would kind of need to happen because it's incredibly vulnerable with almost no protection, and it will lose all those lingering effects if it's simply flipped face down. But since they are lingering effects, your opponent can't negate them by negating the card itself with something like Infinite Impermanence, and instead would have to negate the individual effects if they wanted to stop the banishes. So, it's a pretty interesting granted effect, and even saw play in one Super Soldier Necros deck back in 2016. And at number 8, we have Vendred Core. Now, the effect this card grants to a Vendred Ritual Monster isn't that great compared to the last two cards, as all it does is make it so that card cannot be targeted with card effects. But, this card has an effect in the graveyard, where you can banish another zombie monster in order to special summon this card, but then it banishes itself and it leaves the field. And because it's one of the best main deck Vendred monsters at bringing itself out, it kind of saw the most play, even though pretty much all the other main deck Vendred monsters have better granted effects. Like how Vendred Revenants will grant a monster a quick effect to banish one of your opponent's special summon monsters once per turn. Although Vendred decks rarely see actual play, and when they do, they're generally played at their most base form with as few Vendred monsters as possible, and the only topping Vendred deck that wasn't just used as a light engine and something else was one that used an Orcus engine in 2019, and Vendred Core was the only non-ritual Vendred monster that actually saw play in that deck, which technically makes it the best of the bunch, even if its granted effect is kinda not as good as its others, but it's still a pretty valuable one if you're trying to keep your ritual monster alive. And at number 7, we have Star Drawing. This is a simple card. It's a level 4 monster, which can be treated as a level 4 or 5 monster for an XC summoned. And if it's used for an XC summoned, then it will grant the card the effect that when it's XC summoned, you get to draw one card. So Star Drawing was a pretty decent card back at the beginning of the XC's era, as it was a generic card that worked in a lot of different kinds of XC's decks, and could be a good way to get an easy material for a rank 5 monster since it could treat itself as if it was a level 5 monster for the purposes of Xyz plays, 
Plus, the ability to draw a card on summon is really good. So the card is basically a plus one in card advantage. It only really saw play in a couple of super quant and trap trick decks though, but its simple effect and generic usability meant this card saw tons of play in the casual scene. And I remember seeing this card all the time when I would play online against other players, even if it wasn't a super high appearing card in competitive events, which is why it's on this list but kind of towards the bottom. And at number six, we have Noble Knight Kustanen. This is a level four Noble Knight monster, which can special summon itself from your hand if you control a Noble Arms equipped spell card on the field. And it has the effect where if this card is used as material for a Noble Knight Synchro, Xyz, or Link summon, then that Noble Knight monster will gain the effect where it gives you an additional normal summon for the turn, but makes it so you can't special summon other monsters from your extra deck except Noble Knight monsters. And this effect does stack with other copies of itself. So cards that can grant effects while also being able to special summon themselves are very valuable, as seen by cards like Wind Witch Snowbell, and was mainly used to go into Isolde Two Tales of Noble Knights in order to help extend plays or to play through hand traps, as gaining additional normal summons is always super good. That's why Nightmare Goblin is banned. Although the card pretty much immediately stopped seeing play once Infer Noble Knights came out. But it is still an excellent lingering effect that probably has the most triggers out of all the other cards in this list, as it can be activated when used as one of three extra deck monsters. And at number 5, we have Wind Witch Snowbell. This is a level 1 tuner which can special summon itself from your hand if you control two or more wind monsters and no non-wind monsters. And if this card is used as a synchro material for a wind synchro monster, that monster will gain the effect where it cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Now, this card actually saw a lot of play because it's part of the Wind Witch engine, which was a series of three main deck monster cards, and without a single use of your normal summon, you'd be able to bring out a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon with Snowbell's lingering effect that gives it destruction immunity. And Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon has the effect where, once per turn, it can negate another monster's effects, and has the ability to gain a self-honest effect if it attacks a level five or higher monster. So it's a really good card to get out, especially if you can make it with only one card from your opening hand, that being Wind Witch Ice Spell, who can then special summon Wind Witch Glass Spell from your deck, who can then add Wind Witch Snowbell from your deck to your hand, giving you two wind monsters on the field in order to special summon Snowbell from your hand. Then you just use Wind Witch Ice Spell and Glass Spell to go into a level seven Synchro, then use the Synchro with Ice Spell to go into Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. It does lock you out of summoning other cards except level five or higher wind monsters, but if your deck can handle that, it's an excellent engine to run. Now, as for the lingering effect itself, the reason this card's on this list is because of the excellent engine it's part of and how easy it can bring itself out from the hand. There is another level two tuner monster in the game called Clear Effector, which technically has the same lingering effect and it allows you to draw a card if it's used as a synchro material. But since it can't special summon itself, nor is it part of a really good engine, it hasn't seen any competitive play. Whereas Wind Witch Snowbell has seen tons of it. And at number four, we have Update Jammer. This is a Link 2 monster where if this card is used as a Link material, it grants the Link monster the ability to make a second attack this turn. So granting a Link monster the ability to attack twice is huge. That's why this card is limited with its summoning materials, as it requires two level two or higher Cybers monsters, which means it's hard to use level one tokens or even converting tokens into link monsters in order to use them to bring out Update Jammer. They knew this card's lingering effect was good, so they tried to restrict it as heavily as possible with its materials in the first place. But that just meant that decks that could play this card would play this card, like Salaman Greats, which was a competitive deck that had nothing but Cybers type monsters in it. Now, Update Jammer also has some other effects on the field, where it basically has the effect of Forbidden Scripture if a Cybers type monster battles, where it will negate the effects of all of the cards in the field and use the original attack and defense of both of those monsters. And then has an additional effect where if you destroy an opponent's monster by battle, you can also inflict 1000 points of damage to your opponent. So it's a pretty decent effect if you have a high attack Cybers monster who you want to beat over one of your opponent's cards. But the main reason Update Jammer saw play was as a link climbing tool, in order to use its lingering effect on a better link monster so that it could attack for game, or on a monster that had great effects to use multiple times the battle phase, like Borolo Dragon. And at number three, we have Psychic Wheel Eater. This is a level three tuner monster, which has the effect where it can special summon itself from your hand if you control a level three monster. And if it's used as material for Synchro Monster, it has an effect where you can target one monster in the field who has an attack less than the Synchro Monster this card was used as material for, in order to destroy that target. 
So if you bring out a high attack single monster like Goyo Guardian, you'll be able to destroy any monster less than 2800 attack, which is a lot of monsters. And since this is a tuner monster which can special summon itself from the hand, that makes it incredibly valuable. Which is why this card saw all kinds of play in Burning Abyss and Salaban Great decks. Normally, a tuner which can special summon itself from the hand and fit very nicely into any archetype is already good in of itself. But since the card can also allow you to destroy cards while going into Synchro Summons, just makes it even better. I was kind of surprised they added a card like this to Duel Links because the power level of this card was good enough for it to see play in the TCG. But I was also surprised to see that it wasn't that overpowered in Duel Links, even if it did still see competitive play there as well. And at number 2, we have Jin, Releaser of Rituals. This is a level 3 monster which has the ability where it can be used as material for a ritual summon from the graveyard by banishing this card when used as a material. And if used as a material for a ritual summon, the ritual monster will gain the effect where your opponent cannot special summon monsters while you control that ritual summoned monster. So this card was used in Necroz decks with Necroz of Colossalus in order to easily get out a level 3 Necroz monster with a high 2300 defense. That was really hard for your opponent to get over if they had no ability to special summon, as locking out your opponent's special summons is one of the strongest floodgates effects you can accomplish. And that's why most cards that have the ability to shut down special summons are banned, or incredibly hard to bring out. And this card definitely fits in the banned category. Now, this card was fine when it first came out because there wasn't really good ritual decks, but Necroz kind of changed that. Necrons were such an incredibly efficient ritual deck that they kind of made Konami reevaluate old ritual support. Like Jin, Releaser of Rituals, who was okay in the days when ritual cards were still kind of hard to use, but became broken when they became much more convenient and accessible due to an archetype like Necrons. Or even worse, now that we have the incantation support. But being able to resolve Jin, Releaser of Rituals is kind of equivalent to winning the game against a lot of decks because most decks need to be able to special summon in order to remove cards from the field. And the effect granted is a lingering effect, so it can't be negated easy. So they can't even use something like Infinite Impermanence to shut down the effect temporarily. Although, even with how good the effect is in the current ban status, I think number one card is still a little bit better with its granted effect. And at number one, we have Zodiac Ratpeer. This is a level 4 Zodiac monster, which has the effect that when it's normal summoned, you can send one Zodiac card from your deck to the graveyard. And if this card is used as material for an Xyz Beast Warrior type monster, that card will gain the effect where once per turn they can detach one material from themselves in order to special summon a Zodiac Rat Peer from your hand or deck. Now, here's the problem with Zodiac Rat Peer. The effect is a soft once per turn. And the Zodiac archetype has this distinction where all six of their Xyz monsters have the special ability, where they can bring themselves out on top of any one Zodiac monster you control with a different name once per turn. So with a single Zodiac Rat Peer, you can then immediately use it as a full material for a Zodiac Xyz monster, who could then either be used as a material for another Zodiac Xyz monster, or just use the effect straight away. But basically, you'd be able to special summon two other Zodiac Rat Peers from your deck, and then use both of those Rat Peers as materials in order to go into their own Zodiac Xyz monsters. And during full power Zodiac days, being able to get a single Zodiac on the field was enough to start a whole bunch of really good combos that could allow you to set up a full board of monsters while drawing an additional 5 cards from your deck. Also, just searching out a whole bunch of whatever you wanted. And Zodiacs had two really good Xyz monsters in the form of Zodiac Broadbowl and Zodiac Dryden't. And Zodiac Rat Pier was just ridiculously good at furthering Zodiac plays, because it was a 1 card plus 2 in card advantage in one of the most consistent decks in the game's history, which really did not need extra card advantage, which could be recycled further with Digusto Emerald. So Zodiac Rat Peer was never actually banned, it was only limited to one copy per deck, but seeing as the entire effect of Zodiac Rat Peer revolves around having additional copies of itself in the deck, this is basically the same thing as banning the card, as you can't actually use its good effect at all, other than maybe using its normal summon Foolish Bearer-like effect in order to set up your graveyard. So it's kind of like Knight Assailant. The card is kind of useless when there's only one copy, but broken when you have multiple copies of the same card in the deck. And for the purposes of this top 10 list, it really goes to question whether the ability to go plus 2 with a Zodiac engine is better than the ability of locking your opponent out of special summoning with Jin release or rituals. They're both powerful effects, but full power Zodiac Rat Peer was a lot more game defining, and Zodiac decks still see play even with this card basically made useless, which should say something about the Dagon engine. Alright, and that's the video. 
If you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, as this topic was a suggestion from a previous video, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. Also, make sure to like the video. It helps out more than subscribing. 